All right. I suppose that's probably enough. I mean, it is also just a matter of, I don't know if it's because his armor is so weak, but uh, I mean, you would hope that at this point, our squad members could take a hit uh, and not just immediately get destroyed. I mean, it is a rocket, to be fair, yes, but uh, it's a little concerning. You know, if, we're, if we round this corner here, are we about to get one shot as well? Uh, of course, we have full HP, whereas Kane is like not quite fully recovering, so that could certainly be a factor as well, I suppose. But, uh, uh, and also I think some of it might be that there appear to be a couple of enemies over there that are perhaps simultaneously knocking them down. So, well, that's, that's one of the, the local wildlife peoples. Oh! Oh! That's not just a rocket drone or something like that. That's a juggernaut. That's a little bit of a bigger deal. Um, okay. Let's do something about that, maybe. Um, excuse me. I missed with stasis. Um, let's sabotage you immediately. Now it's fun. And let's lift you immediately. Because otherwise, this is going to become a bit of a problem. Okay, he's down. That's good. Thought I saw one of the rocket drones that Ashley is directly shooting at, unless she's shooting at the local wildlife. Is that? Oh, that that is not. That was sneaky. Did you see that? That was a drone right there. It had almost the same number of limbs. It was on the ground, so it looked just like one of these guys. That was devious. That almost got me. I did not realize there was a drone until, well, it started uh, shooting at us. All patched up. All right, Caden. How's it going, buddy? How you doing? Could be another one of these. We'll just blow through all of our meta shells. Like I said. Now, is it strictly necessary? No, definitely not, but it's an opportunity. Good as new. One that uh, we haven't really seized in the past to use up our metagels, so, uh, I mean, we have, we've used, like, maybe two or three before this mission. That's about it. So, uh, we are not really all that close to finishing that achievement, which is part of the reason why I was being kind of aggressive there with, uh, sacrificing Caden to the death. Okay. Again, keep an eye out for crates and the like, although I, for the most part, don't think we're going to run into too many of those here. And again, don't go off the side there. I know you might be thinking, oh, but please, this looks interesting. What is that? Don't do it. You'll get a mission failure. Uh, hold on. Looks like some Geth shields. Uh, looks like they were some Geth shields. My guess is that probably means there are some more Geth over here. See, whoa! Uh -oh. I saw one of the, uh, the little crawly, crustacean-y dudes, but then, uh, as I was staring at it, I then, uh, proceeded to see the, uh, the rocket that was heading toward the Mako. And, uh, we don't have very many good angles here. It seems like if we want to get a line of sight on them, well, then, uh, they're gonna get a pretty clear line of sight on us. So let's turn immunity on for Ashley, let's turn barrier on for us and for Caden. That should make things a little easier to handle here, but we've got just to get a lay of the land a bit. Get the salt drone. That seems to be the closest enemy. And we've got something back there. It looks like the same coloration as that juggernaut we were fighting previously. That could be the case. Could be a rocket tripper. I mean, given how we saw some rockets earlier, could very well be coming from them. And that might even be another get that little red dot back there. So I think, why don't we... I feel like this guy's going to be the most threatening, or at least he's two guys back here are going to be the most threatening, but this is certainly the closest enemy. So what if we deliberately stasis you? And then, yep, I think we've got two rocket people back here, and they are, they are shooting at us all right. Trying to not hit absolutely an- oh, hello, annihilated by these guys. I want to try to keep strafe into the sides here so that these rockets don't actually hit us. That is initially what it was that dropped Caden so easily. Okay, let's see. That is definitely also one of those rocket thrones. Assault thrones. Also hiding behind stuff, though. Ooh, that was close. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, this one, we had stasis. It no longer says it's in stasis, though. Uh, let's change that. 
that was close. I'm trying to not get hit by those. And that's down. All right, let's move in closer here. Because I think from this kind of range, those out. Those rockets. They're gonna hurt. So we don't really have the ability to counter them all that easy for easily from here. When we are out of range from most of our special abilities. It seems like from this angle we at least have cover from the rocket fire. Now let's make sure we have those barriers back up though. Just in case any of us does get hit. It uh, as we saw with Caden. Apparently, we've now mastered Barrier, so that's cool. But as we saw with Caden, they may be able to one-shot us. Oh, see, now you're much closer. Yes, as we might have thought. Rock Trooper, indeed. Okay, that one is good in theory in stasis, and then I uh, only realized that that projectile flying towards our face was a rocket as well, until it was uh, quite close to us, like that. This guy is still in stasis, though. In fact, there might be... Wait, Ashley, are you really... No. Ashley's right there. I was gonna say, that is not Ashley Williams right there. Um, that looks like there's actually one kind of close to us and another behind it. So what if we maybe throw? I hit the one behind it. I'd actually... we kill it? we one-shot the guy with the throw? I don't know if anyone at maybe uh, Ashley and Caden had been shooting them. So I did not think we had that kind of damage with the throw. But if you throw them against walls, and I guess, technically probably did hit this right next to him. And that may have done the trick. Yes? Take a look at our map here. Okay, and, uh, we're inching forward. Of course, this is a long and winding road to the Solarian camp. But, uh, run into some geth along the way, and we are getting more equipment here. And we got some level 9 stuff. And we are back up to two metagels, so we're, we're getting some back. We are getting some back, and if we're thinking just, because that does remind me, after having mastered Barrier, if there are any other abilities that we've not yet gotten the chance to master, I think Marksman, I actually don't know if there is an achievement for Marksman, the same way there is, I, I should remember this, but uh, in the original Mass Effect, uh, it was, at least in the case of weapons, it was not the, the weapon abilities, I don't think, as much as it was just get a certain number of kills with that specific weapon, and uh, we, I believe, determined that is no longer the case for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That is definitely one of the achievements that is no longer existent. Just destroy those for good measure. Um, but I wonder if maybe they replace those with instead using achievements for the, uh, the individual weapon powers. Because back in the day when there were achievements for killing stuff with the weapons, then a good way to do that was actually by uh, going to those planets with the space monkeys. Elitania, I think, was one of them. And uh, since there are a bunch of enemies that don't fight back and do count for those kills, then you can do it right there. Okay, but we're definitely seeing more death here. Including some. Seems to be hiding behind cover. That's a lot of meta gel there. And, of course, in the original Mass Effect, again, to draw that comparison a bit here, the, uh, there used to be, ooh, hello, almost drove into that, there used to be a penalty for experience when it came to killing things in the Mako. There we go. And so you used to get more experience for fighting on foot, but that is no longer the case in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So there's no reason not to snipe these people when and where we can using the Mako's Increase firepower. Where are the other guys? Over here. Also, let's try to knock it. Get to that. There we go. Did you, did you just get hit by that one? You might have. Is there anyone left here? It may not be. We're definitely still seeing a lot of people on the map. But in this complex here. Ah, uh, yup. At least one of them is. Or was, for that matter. Okay, let's actually move up the uh, make it a little bit further. Ashley's still shooting at something. Might have been that guy who is now dead. But, oh, okay, there, there we go. Let's see, get the trooper up here. He is no more. Not currently seeing anything else on our our map here. 
If we can technically drive through this area with the Mako, however, there is this area up here where we, of course, have seen some of those get. So let's maybe switch Ashley over from sniper to shotgun, since in theory we might be much more up close and personal here. And let's see what we can find in this area. Because although we didn't find really anything in the way of crates when we were down there on the uh, the main level, as we can already see, it does look like we'll find some pieces of gear here. But also some other friends hanging out in this area. So again, let's just be safe here. Throw on our defensive abilities. Because they've got a sniper. And I'm wondering if maybe we can pull that out of there. The lift. I think we got one of them. Fly up into the air. There's definitely still more enemies in here, though. Yeah, for that. That gratted leaf was a hopper that was floating. Of some variety. That's another one that we dash was fighting. Yeah, we're seeing some here. Look out. So remember the hoppers. Although they're very mobile and therefore hard to hit, perhaps more importantly, they are very powerful snipers. And so... It's hopping around, I don't see it. Moment, but apparently, Ashley and or Caden do. And that's even a Geth Ghost. Which, come to think of it, talking about the hoppers, of the various varieties, there are, I believe, three kinds of them. And Ghost, I think, is the strongest. And this might even be the first time we've seen a Ghost. There you can see this is a Stalker instead. Different kind. Don't think it's as powerful. The difference being just the, the damage from their sniping ability, their assassination, is uh, is stronger. Deals more damage for the uh, Ghost than it does for the Stalkers. It, of course, would be faster to just charge on in here, but... Is, of course... Not the safest of things to do. Send in some sacrificial lambs here. We'll provide some support fire. Though, just one of them remaining. That's not so much of a difficult thing for us to do to get rid of it. So now let's see what else we find here. Have a, a difficult weapons locker to break through. Like this angle, though. Just find... Oh, really? It's a little quick. There we go. Okay, anything good, though, in fact, no, it's, uh, it's quite bad, actually. Some level 9 gear that is not very rare, and then a, even a level 8, I think. Is that even level 7? Then I thought there was one other thing that we noticed out here. Yeah, this weapons locker. Let's also make sure we grab this, and this looks considerably easier. There we go. Okay, but uh, unfortunately not much better in terms of the quality of the loot we are receiving here. And let's just verify if that is all. I feel as though it may be. Let's make sure there's nothing hiding around a corner somewhere. We did not previously catch, but I think we're pretty good here. Let's head on down. Some more Geth, of course, though in that case, slightly different variety of Geth. Um, uh oh. I think it was uh, kind of stuck there for a second. I, oh no. It is completely stuck at the moment. Um, like, like, I'm not kidding. It is completely stuck right now. Redeploying. It is now teleported. I am now stuck walking in this direction. I can only walk in this direction. Okay. Getting really buggy for some reason? Um, this is strange. Shepard is now only... is locked facing this direction. And so it's hard to describe, but, uh, so all of my movement is based on Shepard facing that direction. Okay, so now it's fixed. Whew, okay. So it's such that, uh, you know, if even if I was trying to face in this direction and, like, going forward, it would still, uh, go forward as if I was facing this way, and so it was kind of like a, a moonwalking, almost, effect. I'm not sure if I trust the Mako. I feel like we should save here. So that that was kind of a scary bug to the point where I felt like we were either going to get completely stuck in place 
or I was going to have no choice but to walk off the edge of the map and get a mission failure. So, save here just in case when we hop back in the Mako. We need to get bugged and can't actually change directions, but no, seems like we're fine. Okay, so, close one, maybe. Fortunately, I think we're okay here now. And we see potentially something very big. Make that a Geth Colossus down here on our map. And uh, this is, of course, the biggest kind of Geth. We've seen them once or twice before. I think on uh, our Geth Incursions mission, we saw one on one of the places. But uh, they're pretty rare. They are, of course, ginormous. But one down, and they're also very good for experience and good for loot as well. And interestingly enough, I think for the first time ever, we may have just gotten this item. Let's take a look. I don't think we've seen this before. In addition to a decent level 9 piece of gear, but take a look on uh, Ashley. At the moment, she's the Crossfire 10, which is certainly not a bad weapon. However, however, you'll notice suddenly we have the Pulse Rifle 9. What is this, you ask? What is this? Few details are known about the manufacturer of Geth equipment. It is from the Geth Armory, though their weapons and armor of, are of the highest quality. So, uh, you may remember, back when we were on the Citadel, uh, a little while ago, we actually did buy a license for the Geth Armory. And, uh, so, it's pretty darn rare, but there are some pieces of gear from the Geth Armory, and, uh, well, this is one of them, the Pulse Rifle. And uh, so we could give this to Ashley, and in fact, it does have quite a bit higher damage than her existing assault rifle. Quite a bit more accuracy as well. The heat's and capacity significantly worse, although, from the looks of things... Hmm. That's strange. Oh, I was going to say that, uh... From the looks of things, we had a bunch of, um, upgrades that allowed us to increase our heat and capacity. However, however... If you look next to that little triangle under the Geth Armory label, uh, that is normally where you would see several squares to indicate that you can put specific weapon modifiers on, upgrades for either ammo or uh, the weapon itself, and as you start getting up to high levels, usually you have two slots there. However, you notice there are no squares, and you can compare that to on the right side where you're seeing the Kovalyov 9, you'll see there, there are three squares there. One would, again, be for usually the ammo, a couple more for the uh, weapon itself. So, uh, however, as you can see, for Geth, for their, uh, their pulse rifle here at the very least, you cannot use any of those upgrades. So, statistically speaking, looks pretty good. High damage. I think, uh, what was the one she was using previously? There's this. Significantly higher damage. Significantly higher accuracy. The not so great heat sink, like we were saying. But is it worth sacrificing? Uh, three upgrade spots if you include the ammo to make this happen. It's a little bit of a tough case to be made. But, uh, you could make it. I suppose you could make it. Uh, I would think if we got a, a Pulse Rifle 10, then you could probably make a, a much stronger argument for it. But I think, let's go back to the crossfire, and let's just make sure that, uh, since we are fighting seemingly exclusively get at the moment at least, Let's throw on, maybe, some of our Tungsten rounds. So that is going to be the most relevant, I would think. Maximize the damage against the Geth. And then, let's also, I suppose we can be frictionless materials for additional heat damping, although, 9 heat sink capacity on this weapon is probably kind of overkill. Might be best to save that for other stuff instead, and Scram Rail might even be better. Maximize the damage to sacrifice a little bit of that heat sink capacity to uh, make up for this weapon's weakness, which I think is that it has, relatively speaking, a little bit of a lower damage rating. But uh, the primary thing we've been using with you, Ashley, has been the uh, your sniper and anti-personnel rounds one. That's gotta go. That's gotta go. So that should definitely be tungsten rounds here in that case. I mean, it already looks like she's... Uh, She's shredding through enemies, but she does hit them with that uh, sniper rifle. Is of course very high damage weapon, but uh, oh, and uh, well, 
We may see those lights flying toward us. Because I believe some of those enemies off the distance are trying to snipe us. Let's take a quick look at uh, our weapon here. Our pistol. Make sure, yeah, that we are not using shredder rounds. Because that's not very helpful at the moment. Let's change that over. And probably looking to do the same thing for Caden as well. And of course, you know, we could get a little more creative and go for something other than the shredder rounds. Or uh, some other effects other than just pure damage, but... It's not a bad idea here. It's, it's sort of a safe option. When you're going against your standard enemies. Just go for either Shredder in the case of organic enemies, of course, or Chunks in the case of uh, synthetic enemies. So I think this should be a little bit better. Also, we are going backwards, or at least backing toward them. So maybe not the play. Let's see, so something over here is shooting at us. And usually those types of projectiles are even coming from other colossi or armatures. And they look like armatures, and it's funny, after fighting that colossus not long ago, these guys look tiny, comparatively speaking. Uh, so one moment while we run them into these rocks. We'll try to knock them down. Or out. What's the matter, buddy? So, if we take a look at our map here, I think what we'll find is we now have a couple of options, kinda sorta. It looks like if we were to go to the left side, this would be the place toward the AA Tower, which is technically the main quest that we're trying to achieve right now. However, if we go down to the right, then uh, we might find a little bit of extra stuff there of some variety. So I think we do that. At the very least, we'll find some more armatures. It's kind of funny how much smaller they look after fighting that Prime, or rather the uh, Colossus. Down it goes. So we're getting items, and of course, plenty of experience from taking those guys down. Technically, you don't really need to fight them, but as we're seeing here, this is another way we can go down. And well, we've got some kind of friend over there who has now noticed us. At first, it was not pointed toward us. Now it is, and this, of course, is either a Colossus or an Armature. This looks comparatively big because that's quite a ways away, and yeah, it is still looking already larger than the previous enemies we were fighting against, so definitely Colossus. Don't mind us here. Just casually sidestep that. Oh, and there's another one, though. I did not see. And uh, we have leveled, in fact. Like I said, uh, those are technically the biggest possible death enemies, and so that is worth a lot of experience to fight them, and therefore, although you can kind of circumvent some of these enemies, I would argue it's uh, definitely worth making the effort to fight them. So, more equipment here, and as we've seen, we're getting a lot of that, and that's part of the reason why I was trying to make a point of selling a bunch of things before we started this mission. But we did level up, and so, let's see. At this point, what were we working on for ourselves? We might have just gotten the advanced barrier? Although, after having done that, uh, I would take, what, one, two, three, four, five levels to get to master barrier, which would mean... I have to imagine, in Legendary Edition, there is still level 60 cap. That was the level cap on your second or third or subsequent playthroughs for the original Mass Effect. So I doubt we're getting any higher than that. That would mean we could only get Master Barrier if we are committed to spending all of our future levels on the Barrier ability. And if we do truthfully have enough experience to even reach level 60, which... You'd say, oh, well, we're level 5, but surely we're getting close, right? Well, bear in mind, the amount of experience that it takes to get to those very high levels toward the end, exponentially higher than what it is for the lower ones. So, uh, in truth, we might only be, in terms of the experience it takes to get to level 60, uh, there are definitely people who have done the math, and we might only be something like 50% of the way there. And we are probably, given how we have already gotten our achievement for completing more than half the game, Probably more than 50% of the way through the game. So, uh, I don't know about that. That's a little bit tough. Then again, 
experience actually does get higher per enemy that you fight and per uh, crate that you unlock as you get a uh, higher level. But uh, anyways, it's either the barrier or it's the decryption. And decryption at this point, we've already unlocked Master Sabotage. And so it's just, just given us the additional tech explosion damage. Either that or it's first aid. And uh, well, you know how I feel about this one. One, two, three, four, five. Be enough to unlock medicine. However, again, assuming that we're only getting to at most level 60, that means we would unlock medicine, but not have enough points to actually spend any points in the medicine category. So at the very least, that last point is completely, uh, not completely useless in terms of increase the effectiveness of first aid, but yeah, I mean, I think at this point we've gotten all the big stuff. Because it's either barrier, like we were just saying, a little bit extra damage for decryption, first aid that I'm not a huge fan of, or it's Intimidate, and uh, that's not really something we need at this stage when we have maxed out uh, Charm and we are going with more or less a pure Paragon playthrough. So for that reason, I think maybe we do. Maybe we do just go with Barrier here. It's, uh, it's not the most exciting of abilities, but it will, of course, help keep us safe. Especially as we were talking about earlier, we are starting to go up against some dangerous sniping enemies, and uh, they're capable of dealing a whole lot of damage, as Caden recently demonstrated. As for Caden, though, for him, he's already fully leveled up Neural Shock in the Medicine Tree. That's probably fine. Good. Give him first level of Stasis, just for a little bit of crowd control. Could also give him more barrier. Make him a little bit tankier. Because uh, as we did see, he's, uh, he's not doing much. In a, or he's not doing all that well from a survivability standpoint. Part of that has to do with his back gear right now. But why don't we put the barrier point on him? Because otherwise, in a similar situation of just throwing on a little bit extra damage with description, I'm not sure how much of a difference that's really going to make. Then we have Ashley. And she might be a little bit more of an interesting question. It looks like we are trying to build toward advanced adrenaline burst here. Maybe not a bad idea. Just a tiny bit of weapon damage along the way, and a decent chunk of melee damage too. But uh, it's either that, or it's first aid, and again, you know how I feel about that. Or pistols, and even now she has access to so many other weapons, that just feels like she's certainly the least likely character to ever need to use pistols. So, unless there's a specific reason why we are deliberately reducing our firepower, like in the Besiege base mission that we were trying a little while ago. But I think we do just keep it simple, go for working toward advanced adrenaline burst here. And the other thing is that we are hoping that uh, we actually, by leveling up here, are more likely going forward to get level 10 gear. So we've gotten it on occasion. Here, yep. There's the other guy that was shooting at us before. It is another Colossus. And it does not seem to care that we are... Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Casual, no look. Shoot you with my high-powered cannon ability. Clever move. Clever move. Two can play at that game, though. Two can play at that game. And we are loading up on more of that Metagel. As suspected, that's not bad. And we have uh, snipers from somewhere lining up shots and guessing Mako. I'm actually deliberately going back here. So what we did was actually, despite this looking like this is an entirely uh, a dead end, it looked like actually this, what appears to be that part where you can't go through, was really just sort of like an archway that we could go under. So we went under it, and that's where we found the original Colossus here, second Colossus right there. And uh, so this was the way we were originally thinking would be the, the sort of official way through. And uh, so obviously we don't need to go back here. Because we've already made it through the area that we need to go down. But it is a means to go through and fight some more enemies. Get some more experience, get some more uh, weapons and gear and what have you. It may just be that additional armature there. But again, I mean, the armatures, they're worth a decent chunk of experience in the Colossi, like I was saying, a very large chunk. So that is, uh, is not insignificant, making a point of fighting them. And we started to see some snipers as we were approaching over here. And uh, my guess is, 
as we are starting to approach this gatehouse, might be similar to the previous gatehouse that we ran into where there were Geth hiding out inside of it. Let's save here. It's because we've been going for a little while in between saves. And, uh... Okay. Now let us approach. See if we can find where they're trying to snipe us from. Any signs of gunfire? Surprisingly not. Kind of expected for us to get pelted as soon as we rounded this corner. Okay. Where are the get? Trying to snipe us before? Well, there's some of them. Well, the other thing is we've been, uh, I believe we've now loaded up enough on Metagel that we are back at our maximum capacity. So if we wanted to try again, use our sacrificing Caden strat. Oh, hello. Get the sniper. And this could be another time to do that. Please don't do that. I imagine we'll find more death up here like we did last time. Up, oh, what are you? Trying to shoot at someone up there. Let's make sure that people are using logical weapons here. Shotgun, and of course, it's always going to kissle for Caden. So, unlike the last time where we could just drive right on through here, this time, the gate is truly blocked. We're not driving through those things. So, we need to get up here open things up so that we can drive through the Mako. And, uh, hold on. That's a shock trooper. Let's do something about you. You're down. In theory, there is someone else up here, though. At least one other. In close proximity to where we currently are. It's definitely a crate over there, but it's another shock trooper. Trying to hide around this cover? Well, I'll tell you what. Nice, uh, excuse me. Uh, I hit the wrong enemy, the lift, or at least lift went over there in that corner to lift up this barrier or something. All right, let's check out this crate before we forget about it. And there we go. Okay. So, of course, this is just one crate, but this is the kind of thing that I'd like to see now that we've leveled up a little bit more, is that we used to only get the occasional level 10 item, but hopefully at this stage, now... The majority of things we pick up will be level 10. Because as we were starting to see, uh, we've, we've been able to pick up some pieces of gear that have been sort of the highest rarity, along with being level 10. But uh, not always. Not always been able to do that combo, and so this would certainly increase the likelihood of us being able to do that. And we've just started to see some new things altogether. Okay, so we know there's some baddies in here. Including potentially several snipers, and those might be a couple of juggernauts back there, the kind of blurry guys. So I think, speaking of lift, probably a good time for that. And even like Ashley, if you could carnage to blast through some of this stuff, that'd be great. Thank you. We should probably stasis somebody. But uh, this is this is the time when having some crowd control abilities would prove very helpful. And our well, I suppose we do we have Caden who can do a little bit of that. We can do a little bit of that as well, but someone like Liar or even Tally against uh synthetic enemies. Very helpful as well. That is something we don't want to have to ask. Let's not test how much damage that does, right? But no, if you could like lift right there, that would be great. Okay, now we have one of them lifted. He's down. There's definitely still one in there. Sabotage the weapons. Because you can't shoot us, at least not with your primary weapon. Then uh, we can stasis you as well. I may have missed that. I definitely did miss it. But he is down. Again, sabotaging the weapons. He there. I think we're good, Commander. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff here, including A8. Gun tower controls and uh, some other stuffs, including this weapons locker. Let's continue to test our theory, see if we can more consistently get level 10 gear. 
and uh, at least a little bit here. Again, I mean, I think it's it's never going to be, or at least we're not at the point where it's going to be all the time. Let's see, we have gate controls activate, gate control or gun tower disable. Well, I suppose you do need to disable the gun tower, allow the Mako to land, or rather the uh, Normandy to land, and we need to open the gate to let the Mako through. I'm reading that the grid is down, Commander. On approach to the Solarian base now. Out. Ready to move out, Commander. Actually got 40 uh, Omni Gel for that as well. I did not realize that was going to happen. That's that's a pretty sizable chunk. And there we have... Okay, so now we have a level 10. Get the Assault Rifle. So that was what we were talking about before. Was that level 9? It's a bit of a hard case to be made, but maybe it's worth doing at level 10? It's, uh... Definitely an easier case to be made for switching over to that, because of course, like we were saying before, statistically, in terms of its pure damage and other stats, it is strong. Where did it go? There you are. Huge damage per second. Heat sink capacity, not great, but I mean, it's still five, which is it's usable, for sure. Accuracy, also very good. The downside is you can't use any upgrades or even ammo effects while you have it, and so... You have to ask yourself, is that worth doing? And if you think about, well, at the moment we're using synthetic rounds, or rather a tungsten rounds for 40% damage against synthetics, and so that would mean that that's worth on the order of uh, 120 additional damage per second, and so uh, that would more than make up for the damage difference between Ashley's existing uh, assault rifle here and the pulse rifle. So, you take that into account, and damage-wise, she's still doing better with her current setup. Heat sink capacity-wise, obviously her current setup is better. Accuracy, definitely not as good. Uh, I mean, we could try to put additional accuracy on using the weapon upgrades that, of course, again, you don't have access to with the uh, pulse rifle. But, instead, we've given her... Oh, we're going high explosive rounds? I did not remember that. Um, we might not want to be... I mean, yes, funny. Yes, at times, effective. But if this is her primary weapon, and I think we probably still want to keep this at, uh, at tungsten rounds. Because this was something that, at times, when we're in close quarters, and we're expecting to be potentially overwhelmed by enemies rushing us down. Very useful, for sure. But, uh, we're, for the most part, we're fighting at quite a distance here. And so I think just pure damage is really the way to go. But, uh, so that's the damage. But then... Frictionless materials, that's a little bit more damage. Heat damping, uh, I mean, you can fire even more before the weapon overheats, which probably not necessary, given how much heat sink capacity she already has on this weapon. But then we threw on the scram rail for the extra damage, and you, know, you consider all that stuff, and while the accuracy is still lower, uh, you know, we're actually getting considerably more damage with her crossfire than we would be getting with the pulse rifle because of all those upgrades, so I think it is worth doing. I think it is worth uh, keeping on her existing uh, weapon. Because all those upgrades do seem to add up to a lot more. Hold on a second. Oh, did I... There's still... Ah, this. Almost forgot. I was like, there's still an exclamation point in here. Did we forget something? Oh, we got so caught up in that. Almost forgot to open the gate. I mean, then again, it, it would have been pretty obvious as soon as we got down there, we weren't going to be able to go through that still needed to do that, but alas, that mission is accomplished now, and as Joker was saying before, by uh, disabling that AA tower, we've now allowed the Normandy to land by that Solarian camp. Was that the... Actual weapon? Not entirely sure, but anyways. Let's work our way on out of here. Let's take a look at our map. Because the Slarian camp, I mean, it doesn't look that far away as the crow flies. It, it never looked that far away, but as we were saying before, this is a very windy pathway we are traversing to get there. And let's see. We do have enough big gear. The AA guns are down, and normally can land at the Slarian camp. Continue on and meet them there. Fair enough. Doesn't... Oh, careful. There's the Normandy. Hello. 
flying rather low to the ground there, but uh, careful, it would be very easy actually to drive right off the edge of the map there. Because remember, you can't go past those barriers, and they're rather low in that spot, and it kind of, if you just go full speed ahead, very easily accidentally do that. As I almost did right there. But we've got ourselves another one of these towers, seemingly. Or at least another one of these gates. So, hold on. There's not a lot of room to wiggle here. After I get turned around a bit. 